So I want to minister this evening in leaving Midian. And so um, a drunk driver is told not to drive. And so if he or she drinks, they are not to drive because they could hurt themselves or somebody else. People who have a drink, uh, drink should hand over the keys to somebody who is sober and let this other person take control of the steering wheel so each passenger in the car can get from where they are, amen, to where they're supposed to go. And so many of us are driving, amen, the steering wheel of our own lives, and we shouldn't be. And so we are crossing the lines swerving and going into the ditch because we are out of control. And so God stands available to take the keys out of our life and to drive us home. He can, he can uh, drive us, amen, from here to eternity safely and on, on time. But he's going to have to control the wheel, amen. And I want to say this evening that he must be in charge and so we're going to take a look at a story, amen, of a man, amen, who has trouble giving God control. But when he does, God is able to use his life in a mighty and powerful way. And this man's name is Moses this evening. Let's read Exodus 1 through, uh, 3, 1 through 15. It says, Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to uh, Hebar, amen, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire and in the midst of the bush. And he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside and looked, God called him from the midst of the bush and said to Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near to this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God, amen. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I surely have seen the oppression of my people who go, who are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them from that land to a good large land, a land that flows with milk and honey, to a place of the Canaanite, Hizzites, and Amorites, and Pezrites, and the Hivites and Jezevites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will certainly be with you. And this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve the God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is your name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And then he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Moreover, uh, God said to Moses, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, the Lord your God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And it goes on to say, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Let's pray this evening. God, we pray this evening that you would move, my King, that you would have your way in our lives and in our hearts, Lord God. Let us understand your calling this evening, Lord God, that you, Lord God, are with us, Lord God, wherever we may go, Lord God. It may not be easy, Lord God, but you have promised that you are there for us. We praise you. 
Lord God, for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to take a look at the burning bush experience. And so Moses killed an Egyptian and he runs away from Pharaoh. So Moses finds refuge and comfort from his past in the land of Midian. And so Moses' father-in-law is a priest of Midian. And no doubt through this priest, Moses is able to find religion. And so Moses is living in a good, a good life in Midian. He's married, he has children, he has flocks, and he also has religion. Amen. What else could we ask for? Amen. But in the back of Moses' mind and heart, there is unrest. Moses is a hundred miles away from his people, but there is something inside of him that is burning. Moses has physical rest in the land of Midian, but I want to say that Moses found no peace because inside of him, Moses knows who he is and where he's come from. Amen. Moses, amen, was born in Egypt. He knows who he is, what he's done, and where he's come from. Even though he was in a fruitful land, even though Moses had many things in his life working for him, Moses wasn't at, at peace. And so you can imagine while Moses is tending the sheep of his father-in-law, one of them goes ahead and strays away. Moses la later finds that, that sheep. He finds the remains of the sheep. He finds the blood of the sheep. Maybe on a ja jagged rock on the side of a mountain. And so it had been attacked by a wild animal. So Moses then flashes back when witnessing an Egyptian brutally murdering, amen, or beating a Hebrew slave. And so Moses becomes furious and so impulsively kills an Egyptian. I want to say that you just don't kill someone and forget about it so easily. Moses is asleep at night in Midian. He has nightmares of the taskmasters in Egypt abusing and killing his own people. You can change, amen, on the outside, but not on the inside. What, you're, what you are eventually will come out sooner or later. And so Moses, amen, knew the story also when he was saved from the Nile in a basket. And the thousands of innocent Babies were killed. Moses was saved, amen, from the hands of the Egyptian. But a lot of, amen, uh, Moses, um, amen, kindred were not. Moses, no doubt, found refuge in Midian from Egypt. Moses had, must have been thinking to himself and in his own heart, I got away from Egypt. I got away from those brutal experiences in my past. He must have been thinking to himself, there has been an invisible hand, amen, over my life, keeping me from harm. He must have said to them, himself, if there is a God that's been this good to me, then he can do the same for my Hebrew relatives back in Egypt. And so when you have been saved and delivered, God is not going to leave you alone. Because you are the answer to a people in need of deliverance. And so when you get saved, amen, God births something in your heart. He births a passion. You want to see other people redeemed. You want to see other people saved. And so this is birth in your heart because this is in, in God's very nature, amen. God is a redeemer. Amen. God is a, is a God, amen, that wants to establish, amen, what was one day in the garden, relationship with humanity. How many of us know that man messed it up? But God gave his son, amen, to reunite us to him. And this is God's heart, amen. And you see this in, the sto in this story. God wants other people to come into a right relationship with him. And so Moses was brought up in the splendor of Egypt's courts as Pharaoh's daughter's adopted son. Grown to manhood, he was aware of his um, being a Hebrew or be his, uh, amen, roots as a Hebrew. 
And so he shared a deep compassion for those, amen, confined in Egypt. Hebrews 11, 25 through 26 says this, because he preferred to share the oppression, suffered the hardship, and bear the shame of his people. Amen. God, uh, rather than to have the fleeting enjoyment of the sinful life, says, consider the contempt and the abuse and shame bore for the, for the Christ, the Messiah who was to come, to be a greater wealth than all the treasures of Egypt. For he looked forward and away to the reward. Amen. The, uh, amen. And so Moses knew when he was in Pharaoh's palace, he was not satisfied with sin and the allure, amen, of Egyptian sensuality. Moses had a revelation, amen, of sin and redemption. Moses had these thoughts and emotions running through his mind. And so when this happened to Moses, Moses has this burning bush experience where he's able to meet with God. All these things, amen, are going around in his mind and in Moses' heart. Moses was tending to the flock of Jethro's father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert. And he came to Hebron, the mountain of God. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside to see this great sight, why this bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside and looked, God called him from the midst of the bush and said to him, Moses, Moses. And here's Moses respond to what God said to him. He said, here I am. Telling God of his availability. Amen. Telling God of his surrender. And so when we have a revelation of our state without God and man's sinful condition, then God is able to meet us with power and might. Amen. And so have you come to the conclusion in your life that without an intimate connection with God, life just doesn't function correctly? We would sing that song in Houston all the time. It's, it's, uh, it's a song, it's called I Love to Praise Him. And what the song says is it goes like this it says he's my rock my rock my rock my sword my shield he's the wheel he's the wheel in the middle of the wheel amen and so god amen is the wheel in the middle of the wheel if you look amen at a tire amen at, at your rims most of them back in the days you used to have spokes and so god is in the middle of everything that we do, amen, if you would look at those spokes, amen, they wouldn't be there, amen, without the middle of the wheel, and so it's, everything is surrounded, amen, by God's Son, Jesus Christ, and Moses realizes this, that everything is found in God, amen, that he is only sufficient, in God. And so Moses got tired of doing things his own way. And he says, God, here I am. God is a fire burning up inside of those that would surrender to his will. But to those that turn away from him. I want to say that they're burned up. They'll eventually, amen, burn up. I want to take a look at God's and indwelling fire. Intending the block of uh, the flock of Jethro, Moses learned a valuable lesson about leading God's people. When he went to Hebron, Amen, Mount Sinai, the Lord appeared to him in a bush that burned with fire, but was not consumed. The bush suggests that the glory of, of the glory of God, before which he would uh, was told to stand, Amen, with unshod feet. And the might also foreshadow Jehovah's dwelling in the midst of his people without being consumed. And some have even seen it 
the destiny of Israel, tried in the fires of affliction, but not consumed. We should all be like the burning bush, burning for God, yet not consumed. And so a special use of fire, amen, in the imagery of the New Testament is connected with the baptism of fire. And so John the Baptist, amen, practiced, amen, what, uh, I mean, predicted what Jesus, amen, would do. He would baptize with the Holy Spirit, a promise that was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. Then the tongues of fire rested upon the gathering in the upper room with the result that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. The fire here is a manifestation of God. In the case of the third person of the Godhead, a theological concept, conception unknown in the Old Testament. And so, amen, as we look at scriptures, man, God would fill his people with his spirit. In the case of Moses, you see God's, amen, will placed upon his life. And it's manifested, amen, in, in a fire. I would always think about this in, in my own, amen, as I would read the scripture, I would say to myself, what does this fire mean? A fire that it's lit, but it's not, amen, this tree is not burnt up. And so that's a picture, amen, of us, that God can dwell within us, amen, that we can do his will, that he can consume you and I to do his work. Amen. And that's what happened to Moses. On the other hand, God is a judge. In other passages, the anger of God is not only mentioned metaphorically, represented by fire, but fire becomes a literal vehicle of his wrath. And at Tebra in uh, Sinai, desert, Yahweh's anger arose and fire from the Lord burned among the people. And in the rebellion of Korah, his followers also resulted in many of them perishing by fire, a manifestation of God's hot anger, a most impressive display of fire as an instrument of judgment is the destruction of the messenger, amen, Isaiah, amen, of Israel who had, amen, a temple, amen, this sees uh, the prophet, amen, only struck by fire, amen, from heaven. And so we see here, amen, in the scripture, either we can do something for God or we can be, amen, judged by God. You look at humanity and those that don't serve God are basically getting consumed by their own destruction, by their own sin. And so we have a choice in life to be used by God or to be destroyed by life's sinful desires. Second Timothy 2, 20 through 21 says, Now in a great house there are only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some honorable use and some for dishonorable use. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honor, amen, set as a holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. And so this evening, amen, I want to be a vessel of honor, not a vessel of dishonor. And so the scripture says here that we can cleanse ourselves, amen, and become vessels of honor for God. Let's take a look this evening as Moses in capability. And so Moses had a desire in his heart to do what God was asking him to do. But he was not sure he was able, amen, to accomplish everything that God had put in his heart. And so that is the difficulty when we get saved. God lays his desire on our hearts, but articulating what he has inspired us to do is totally different. This is where Moses finds himself. A man with the desire to do something, amen, in God's kingdom, but is, but the insufficiencies, amen, to carry God's will out. And so when this happens, I want to say there is a temptation to stay in the land of Midian. I stated that Midian is a good place. Midian is a land, amen, full of comfort, security, 
Amen. It's a familiar place. And isn't that where every, what everyone is looking for in life? They're looking, amen, for the good life. They're looking for the comfortable life. They're looking for Midian. Amen. We like our comfort. Amen. How many of us know that everybody wants to have a dream home? But the icing on the cake of having our dream home is having your dream home paid for. Amen. So we like our comforts. We like our security. And so that's why people, they get jobs, amen, that have unions. I've been working out in the construction field for a while. Amen. And you see these uh, electrical workers out there. Amen. They've been at these jobs for years. They stay there because they have great benefits. And also they have a substantial pension built up. And we like our security. We like things that are familiar also. We don't like to be moved out of our comfort zone. When we find a place, amen, where we can adapt to the environment, it is hard for anyone to move us out, out of there. And no doubt these things are going through Moses' mind. He's thinking to himself, yes, I want to do the will of God. But yes, I have a wife. I have a ch children. I have Midian. I have my father-in-law. I have these flocks. I have these good things going on in my life. These things are playing in Moses' life and his heart. I want to say this evening, if you are going to do the will of God, you're going to have to leave Midian either physically or spiritually. Amen. My wife told me this a while back ago, and it just didn't make sense to me. She told me that Houston was our Egypt. And that didn't make sense to me. And so when I'm putting this sermon together, actually, I'm, I'm sitting over there, amen, in the morning time and just talking to God. And God revealed something to me. He told me that Midian was my, Houston was my Midian. And so Midian is where I had my encounter with God. Midian was my burning bush experience. It was where God put his calling upon my life. Midian was also an equipping place, amen. No doubt God equipped Moses and Midian. Midian is also, amen, where I had comfort and security. I was familiar, amen. I was familiar with the church there. I still have a home there. I didn't want to leave my home. There was comfort, there was security there. And, and God, amen, called me to leave Midian to go to Egypt, amen, to go deliver people. And so I'm not saying that Washington's Midian, I mean Egypt, but it's my Egypt, amen. It's where I'm called, amen, to bring people, amen, out of bondage and take them into a promised land. That God has promised. And so it was not easy for Moses, amen. And it's not easy for anyone else, amen, to go into a city and to deliver people. Bobby's on his way. He's never been here. I guess his pastor told him, no, you're not going to go scope out the land. You're just going to go <laughs> and do something for God, amen. And so I want to say that Midian is a temporary place. Midian is not a place meant for us to stay in. And so I want to say this. If you're not called to preach or you're not called a, or you're not the wife of a preacher, you're still called to deliver people. And so you have to co constantly challenge yourself to break out of Midian. Because like I said, this Midian is a comfortable place. And how many of us know that we like to be in our comfort? Midian is a state of mind also. Amen. Where we don't like to break, amen, out of our shell a lot of times. I've, I've been there before, amen. God has challenged me. God's recently challenged me to pray for people, for healing. He's challenged me, amen, to, to do uh, different things. Amen. And amen. I'm willing to meet that challenge. 
you know, sometimes when we pray with four people for healing, we're like, well, is God going to move? God didn't tell me to pray for somebody for healing. I remember somebody, God told me to pray for somebody in Houston and he healed them. But he hasn't told me to pray for people here. But I've been stirred to pray for people. And how many of us know that our Midian could be our pride too? Well, what if I pray for them and they don't get healed? Well, what if you pray for them and they do get healed? So Midian, amen, a lot of times is comfort zones that we have. Places that we don't want to leave. Places where we don't want to jump out in faith and do something for God. And Moses, amen, was in a very comfortable place. Have you found yourself dwelling in Midian sometimes? A place of comfort, a place of security, a place where everything is familiar. I want to say this evening... If you don't break out of your Midians, amen, Midian will not cause you to grow. And so for Moses to grow, Moses was in a place, amen, where he had a desire for God. He had a desire to do something for God. But I don't believe if Moses would have left Midian, he would have ended up, amen, dying there. And so growth happens when you leave, amen, your safe place, your safe haven, amen. Think about this. God called Abraham to live, leave his place of safety. Genesis 2, I mean, sorry, 12, 1 through 3 says, Now the Lord said to Abram, go, notice here he's not called Abraham yet, go from your country to your kindred, And from your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And so Abraham's blessing was dependent upon him obeying God. Leaving his household, his father's house, everything, amen, that God said to him, amen, would not have happened if Abram or Abraham have, had stayed in his country. If you look at the life of Abraham, he was blessed Amen. In his father's country, when he got out, he was even more blessed. And God was able to bless him along, amen, the the will of God. And it's all because Abraham left. And so our, amen, amen, God is willing, amen, to meet us and help us along the way. I want to take a look lastly. I am has sent you. Moses said to God, indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your father has sent me to you. And they say to me, what is your name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus, you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And so God is telling Moses that he is Yahweh. And so the Jews consider Yahweh to be sacred. Amen. You couldn't utter this before any, anybody. Think about this. And God tells Moses to go back to the people and tell him that Yahweh has sent you. This is, this is, this is not natural. But when he gets there, amen, they're, they're going to know this name. And so the name proclaims God as self-existent, self-sufficient. He is eternal and he is sovereign. And so the people of Israel knew who God was. 
Moses was not going to the Lord's people on his own ability, but he was going to them in God's might. Amen. Moreover, said Moses, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, the Lord God, your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial to all generations. And so God said something profound here. Amen. He says that he's a memorial to all generations. And so God had proven himself through these patriarchs. Think about this. He, he gives them these names, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That Moses, if they don't believe that, take this to them. And so what God was telling Moses is that look at the insufficiencies and the mistakes of these other men. But I want to tell you, Moses, they have, they have a testimony. And I use these vessels because I want to get glory for myself. Abraham's family, like I said the other day, was a life of shambles. The arrangement of Hagar bearing a child with Abraham for Sarah, amen, did nothing but cause trouble. Abraham is called, think about this, the father of faith because he was, amen, willing to follow God and sacrifice his only son. Even though Abraham had, amen, shortcomings, God was able to use him. Isaac, he lies, amen, to the king of Philist the Philistines for his own fear of his life. But I want to say, amen, after Abraham's death, God blessed, blessed Isaac, amen, and so he settled in the land of his father. Because, amen, God had promised, amen, uh, to Abraham, Isaac. And so Jacob, you take a look at Jacob's life. Jacob was known as a, 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 a deceiver, amen. But I want to say that he was the child of the inheritance. He had many, amen, shortcomings, but I want to say that, that Jacob was the child of the inheritance. He was, amen, the promised child. Think about this. The first child would inherit, amen, the father's inheritance. But this was not so for Jacob. God had called Jacob and God had to work things out in Jacob's life. And so he was the child of the inheritance. And so the people of Israel knew the testimony of God and the testimony of God's people. And so that's why God told amen, Moses that he wasn't going to go on his own ability, but he was going to do something, amen, supernatural for God. And so if we are able to trust God, then he is able to use us. And so Moses, as he goes to Egypt, he is able to perform signs, wonders, and miracles before Pharaoh. Think about all the plagues that came against Egypt. God used Moses, amen, to profess these things that, that were to come. The parting of the Red Sea, amen. The pillar, amen. And, amen, the cloud during the day. God used Moses, amen, to do all these signs, wonder, uh, miracles, and wonders. Amen. God gives Moses the Ten Commandments. Moses is gone for 40 days. He comes back, and God gives him the Ten Commandments. And so God, amen, was able to use this man powerfully. But I want to say this evening... If Moses had never left his comfort, he, he wouldn't have been able to do all these things for God. I want to say Houston is where I had my burning bush experience. But I want to say Washington is where I'm going to experience my miracles. Amen. For God. And... Once we continue, amen, to step out of our comfort zones, 
Like I said, maybe you're not called, amen, to do it, to go anywhere for God. But you're called, amen, to save the people that are in your own city. Amen. And as we step out of, out of our Midians continuously and believe God, I want to say that we're going to have, amen, miracle experiences for God. So can I have every head bowed and every eye closed? Respect to God and your neighbor.